So today, I'm going to put together my new power desktop computer. Uh, in a previous video, I explained what I had spec'd out and that I showed you my pile of parts. Um, now I'm going to dig in and go through uh, building it up. First of all, you see this red thing here is an anti-static mat. It's not absolutely necessary, but it's good insurance uh, when you're working with electronic parts. Um, what is pretty much essential is to have a wrist strap like this that's um, that well, again when I get into working on motherboards and stuff you strap this on your wrist uh, the ground goes back to a good ground like the ground pin on an outlet um, not the power side the safety ground and you want to not build one of these on your own because they've got a resistor in them to limit current to keep you from getting um, getting hurt if uh, for some reason you touched something that had power on it. I'm going to dig in now. i got the case laid out. It's sitting on my anti-static pad. Get my wrist strap on here. I'm going to open up the motherboard. So when you do that, you kind of want to be anti-static. The thing with static is you can put a fairly high voltage into things that you touch and it may not blow it out right away but it can weaken the uh, solid state components and somewhere down the road they'll fail and you'll go why'd that happen and the answer is once upon a time you put static into it so you open up the bag here which is a, as I said before it's an anti-static bag so the inside keeps the static electricity down it also helps if you don't have a wrist strap, you can touch things. Now before I get in here too far, I'm just going to say is, you know, I'm doing it the way I do it, but I'm following all the different instructions and the motherboard has a detailed manual of how things should connect and where they should connect and what plugs you need. Between that and the manual for each of the other components, you know, th things should go together correctly. But if you don't read the instructions, um, things often don't work uh, properly. And so, just a reminder, these heat sinks are real nice. I tell you, I've got some that I have bought aftermarket heat sinks for. All of these are power supplies, um, components of power supplies, capacitors and coils and drivers and so forth. That um, It really helps to keep them cool. Anyway, um, this goes in with the um, rear plate to the back and then there are standoffs and the nice thing on this case is that it looks like the standoffs are all these little black guys here um, are um, it looks like they're all in place so I'm just going to take a quick look two three there are some extra standoffs if for some reason I needed to move some because the board was larger or smaller than what the case had laid out. You want to be really sure that you don't have a standoff in the wrong place that will cause a short. So we're going to set this down. See I've got one, two, three, one in the back. One here, one here, one over in this corner that's a little ways forward, and then these two. So I have three, six, nine, and I have three, six, nine um, screw holes. You just kind of want to be extra, extra careful when you set one of these in that you get it right. if you have, like I say, if you have a, a wrong screw hole, man, you and you short the board out, you, you won't be happy camper. All right, so that's where it should sit. The rear plate is um, pushed into the back of the case. That's good. I may have to take this fan off to uh, to run all the screws in. And then I have a special computer kit um, for working on stuff that's got. Um, non-magnetic screwdrivers and so forth. With all the solid state stuff it's not as big a deal 
Um, but um, there are times where you don't want things that are magnetic, so so we'll just run that down. Just one there. Just got a, I've got a whole bag of screws that came with the motherboard, and uh, we'll just go through and run these down. Well, I'm going to take that fan off, and then I'll be back. So I've removed the fan and put in the rest of the nine screws. I'm just kind of tightening them down now, make sure they're they're uh, solid. I'm going to leave that fan off for the time being because it kind of covers over a number of the headers down here that I uh, probably will need some access to. These screws don't have to be overly tight, but but they should be good and snug. Uh, they are grounding points for the board. You'll see little cop a little. Um, uh, blobs of, or blobs, pads of solder that the screws go down onto. And most of the time when I've built things in the past, the, the screws have been plated. Uh, these are black, but I, I'm going to presume that the coating must be conductive. I'm, I'm sure Antec knows what they're doing, but I was just a little surprised to see them um, not chrome and that the standoffs didn't show as being uh, bare brass. So. Okay, so we got that in. I need to start making connections from the case into the into the motherboard. Make uh, get everything hooked up. And the next one I'm going to hook up is this um, header down in the corner. Are the connections to the switches on the front of the case, and they give you a nice little um, guide on this one to help um, line them all up properly. And there's even a little picture here for how things should go. And the only thing I don't like about this case is it doesn't have a reset button, just a power button. So you don't use that very often anymore, but uh, instead of a reset button, they give you a fan switch. So, ah, well. Um, anyway, these are the wires for the, for the front header. And they've got pluses and minuses. So here, in some cases... This one looks like the power switch. Okay, and that drops right in. And then there's a power LED, plus and minus. And you want to get them in the right order. So, and then there's the hard drive LED. Again, plus and minus. So I need to turn this one. If I turn it this way, the plug is labeled plus and minus. So we'll drop that in there, and they snap in nicely. Gotta flip them upside down. Actually, I don't have to flip them upside down; they'll go either way. So that one's minus, that one's plus. I push them down until they latch in this little connector. And then there's space if you had an inside the case um, speaker. Now why does that have power LED twice? Better check that one. Okay, so they. They apparently allow for two kinds of power LEDs. There's a two pin, which is over here. And on the other end, there's a three pin. And I have the two pin connection, plus and minus, so that's what I'm going to use. And they're all clicked in, so now we'll plug this little header connector in there. Just push it down good till it's snug. Um, this connection on the bottom is a USB 3.2 for the front USB ports. We want to make sure we put that dude in nice and square. Come on. And down on this end is audio, and the, ser the manual says make sure that the pins all match up with your case. The case manufacturer doesn't provide a wiring diagram but the uh, plug is labeled um, HD audio. But the plug is labeled HD audio, and I have checked these out in the past, and I've never had one that wasn't wired correctly, so there's an audio header down here. Make sure there's one pin missing. So I'm going to make sure it goes in the right way. My missing pin is there and there. So you can't put it in backwards. I'll just wiggle that down until it's snug. Ok, 
Okay, that one's done. And that is the pins on the front that um, where you could plug in headphones or you can plug in microphone. And this board has front jacks and it has back uh, rear jacks. So I think the next thing I'm going to do is um, for the cooler I need different brackets. These are the standard brackets that come with it. And the, the um, kit for the liquid cooler comes with its own brackets for an AM5. There's two there are two bags in there. One's for if you had an Intel um, or the others if you have an AMD. So we're going to do this one first. That comes off. One of those goes on with spacers underneath it. So I need to put the spacers on. Let's see how those. Ah, yes, they go one way only. They go over the top of those posts. Makes sense. Screwdriver. I don't want to scratch the scratch the surface of the board because all those little surface mount components are fragile. Now the manual kind of has a sequence for going through this, and I'm. It, it's not a required sequence. It's just how they do it. Uh, the motherboard manual that is. But I'm going to do things in what I'm going to call a logical manner. I'll get these brackets on first. But as you start putting components in here, you access gets a little more difficult. So I kind of want to do things in an order where they're ex most accessible. I kind of layer the build up. So I'm going to leave the cooler out until later. I can probably go ahead and put the processor in. Lever here to open up the socket. Which is, um, I'll just say it's obstructed a little bit by the uh, new brackets I just put on there so it won't stay up on its own. This is another one that you want to be real careful about touching. Um, static, 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 you know. It indicates that the that the that the processor goes in in this orientation, and there are two little notches, so it can only go in one way. They put these little finger notches in here uh, with the idea that there we go. Got it set down in there. There's a triangle on the corner, a triangle on the base, two little notches there. Then this should come down. They claim that it'll pop off when you... I don't know. I'm going to not do that. Okay, so she's sitting in there. And we put that springy um, pad down. So let's try a hard drive. This is supposed to be these fancy new solid-state hard drives this is supposed to be where one of them goes. So let's open this up and see what we got. And that is a heat sink with a piece of uh, tape on it. And there's a standoff and another one. Alright, so I'm going to put this, this first one in the first slot and these boards come with something they call an easy um, snap or installation. I forget what they called it. Anyway, um, the standoff's at the right length. So I need to put it into the socket. It says to do it at an angle. Flip it down and latch it. Well, that's pretty darn good. 
and then um, can reinstall the heat spreader. Now, I don't want to do it quite yet. This is, um, you know, it's an adhesive pad. I don't know how hard that is to get back off of there if, see if it's a, yeah, it's got a little bit of adhesive to it. Take off the next one. good. Now giving this some thought, I'm going to go ahead and button up these drives. I think they'll be fine. So I'm going to peel the tape and glue the heat spreaders down. Glue is a relative term, but you know, there's some nice heat sinks. I have to say the quality on this is nice. Make sure that I got the screws lined up here before I get it glued down too far. I just know that by the time I get the video card installed, it's going to cover up half of this area, and there's no reason these parts shouldn't work. So let's bolt them down. And let's count for uh, count for success, right? Now, before before I install the power supply, uh, the manufacturer's instructions say that they want you to test it. I want you to plug in the motherboard cable like this, and click it in on this end, and then that should be the cable that goes to the motherboard and they provided one of these which just has a jumper on it. I remember when I unboxed it you could see that and therefore they claim you can do it with a paper clip too but it ought to line up and click. Okay so then we'll do this then they want, the, want you to plug it in so there's the cord up to AC power, turn it on and see if the fan starts to spin. I heard something go. Ah, there it is. I had to switch in hybrid mode. Okay, so the fan is running, which means it powered up and life should be good. All right, now I can go put it in the case. So that's the motherboard connector. And then there are some additional ones you need for CPU and the video card. So there's a CPU connector. Plug it into the power supply here. And then this one has six connections for the CPU. These cables are split, so or can be split. I'm not quite sure what I'll call it what spacing or um, things need, but there's the one for PCIe. Two plugs for video card. And I only I only should need one based on what I see here. So I know I'm going to need um, at least one, if not two SATA cables while I'm at it. So there's a good long one with a whole raft of them. That's kind of a short one. We'll see what works, but I'm going to go ahead and get a couple of them plugged in just for giggles, just for the start. 
I screwed the fan back in that I had taken out before because I think I'm I think I'm done there. Um, this is the I just flipped the case over now. This is on the other on the back side. And all the switches and so forth are here. Everything everything was connected. This is the fan controller for the fans that came with the case. And in fact there's the switch there for the fans the fan uh, switch. Power supply goes over here. So I'm going to install the power supply next and then we'll route some cables here. When you're doing one of these custom everything has a has a question. Um, I know a lot of time I'm going to run this unit pretty hard and the fan will be working on the power supply. But Seasonic's instructions say uh, the fan is on the inlet side and if you use the quiet mode, the hybrid mode, um, if you're not running it loaded, if it's idling, the fan would not run. So if you're going to try to do that, they want the fan side, the open side, facing up into the, toward the motherboard so that, I'll say, natural circulation would cool the parts. If you put it downward, then you got a steel case and it won't ventilate. So if you so if you can ventilate it by putting that side up. Now, if I'm going to run the fan full time, this one's got a nice mesh on the bottom and, and an air inlet. So I'm, I'm a little bit torn, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try it with the, um, with the power supply installed um, inverted so that it can naturally cool and hopefully with all of the fans that I have in this case um, that'll be the right way if not I'll come back and uh, and flip it upside down and take that take it out of that mode and just run run the fans all the time well, I was going to install this power supply upside down per the manufacturer's suggestion so that it could run in fan off mode. Um, but I'm having trouble getting the holes to line up. Um, the case really, with the vent on the bottom, the case is really designed uh, for it to go the other way. Let me see if it fits better that way. Folks that designed the case put the holes in expecting you were going to put it right side up. So that's what we're going to do. I know in my current computer the, uh, the fan runs all the time. I could have installed it upside down with three screws but the fourth screw wasn't going to go in. So. Let me try it this way and see how that works. This one says CPU. I know it needs to go up here because that's where it's going to connect. This one can sit out of the way for a few minutes. This is the second one for the CPU. I'll do that. Fans need one of these SATA um, connections. There it goes. Just didn't have it lined up. Okay, so that one works. This one is video card, which will be down here. So we'll drop that one in over here. These are just some extra SATA, SATA ones, and then here's the motherboard which needs to go kind of up the back here and and through. And they have some nice um, loops here that I can fasten things down with later. I'll dress those out once we get where we need to go. Oh, let's go back topside. That one's video card. This one's motherboard. And that should go. I guess I need to take out the uh, test connector. 
And you kind of don't want to put a lot of stress on the motherboard, so you want to flex these things before you hook them up. This is another one that should only go one way. Then we got the ones for CPU. We'll go ahead and plug the first one in. Make sure again that they're going the right direction. Which side are the flats on? And where's the clip? You got flat pins and round pins, so they should only go one way. Oh, uh, rounded pins. And these should clip or should separate. There's kind of a Rather than needing eight pins on this last connection, I only need four. And it's a matter of kind of looking to see which half. That's the one right there. Just plug one in and the other one can hang. That's fine. Okay, so now we got the power connections in. So for the memory, and I've got my um, Trident. Um, Z5 G skill memory. And technically this is faster, it's overclocked memory. It, it can be set to run faster than AMD's spec. Whether or not we'll do that, I'm not sure. We'll see how it performs, but there's the modules and it um, they've got um, looks like lighting on them. So these are DDR5 6000s, and technically non-overclock. When I booted up the first time, it'll set I think at 5200. So now they want you to use. There's a preference which sockets. So you want A2 and B2 as the first ones. So that's this one and this one. Based on the drawing, I'm gonna make sure we get them to the right. Uh, the slot in the right place. If you do it backwards, that's no fun. Okay. Again, I'm locked in. Number two, same way. Get them in the slots. Push them down until they lock in. That's not in yet. There it is. There we go. Now they're latched. Now, everything in this build is just a little bit different. So, the radiator comes with three fans. The normal method of installing the fans requested is to be in a push direction, which would mean this way, pushing air through. I'm mounting this in the front of the case, so this is on the inside coming this way. So I could install them on the other side for push and and have them blow through. There are fasteners uh, on both sides. But my case, I have a nice case that has airflow, has fans already in the front. So I'm going to do what I, I think I'm going to do what you'd call a push-pull which is the case fans already existing in the front of the case are blowing inward so they're going to push I'm going to put these on the opposite side on the inside side so that they can um, so that they pull my choices would be to not use these at all or to take out the standard case fans and replace them with these hard to say but I think I'm going to try at least to see if I can do, like I said, push-pull. Let, let the case naturally push some in. Um, the case fans are constant. These are speed sensitive fans that can be, um, these fans can plug into the motherboard and be adjusted for speed as temperature changes. So they could, we, I could run the front fans on low and have these boost and well, if I needed to, I could run the front fans on high, but again, we'll see you know how that goes as we as we run. Um, they're also 
has been a suggestion that when you use an all-in-one or a liquid cooler that these fittings should go to the bottom uh, so that any air bubbles can't get in the tubing but it won't fit in the case like that there isn't enough tubing and the things are in the way so and the manufacturers pictures show this in a front mount with the tubes up and right or wrong um, that's how I'm gonna have to go and the nice thing about this one is if it gets noisy there's a fill port here and, I, and they say, give you a bottle of fluid and I'll top it up to try to take out the air bubbles but for right now I'm just going to install the fans they have a um, they have an arrow on them so I'm going to install them so that they I got the fans here all screwed down except for this last one. Now I'll have to install the radiator in the front of the case. Alright, change, change in plans. The front of this box on the outside had, it came with three fans that were tied into the fan controller. And I thought I could put my radiator I thought I could put my radiator with three fans on it um, in the back here and have both sets of fans, you know, do it push-pull. But with three fans on this radiator, um, there wasn't enough clearance to get it in. It, it hung up. That's one. Two is that once I got it in there, I wouldn't have access to the screws because the fans were in the way. And then the screws for those fans went in from this side. So it wasn't going to work. If I did this again with this particular layout, I'd be tempted to buy... There are two radiators, right? This is a 360. Actually, there's three of them. But this one's 360 millimeter. There's a 280, which is shorter and that was what I first was going with but uh, as I looked at the cooling data this one was better so you know and the price wasn't much different so I took a shot at it but if I'd have bought the shorter one it would have um, one I could have mounted it up high and the hoses would have reached uh, to get to, to mount I could have mounted it this way with the hoses going up to the CPU from the bottom will not work in this case because everything runs into the steel and um, I probably could have run uh, two sets of fans I'd have found a way uh, because it the 280 is a bigger fan diameter and it's wider and I probably could have gotten screws in so live and learn so where I'm at right now is I took out the factory Antec fans. I'm going to slide the cooler in here where it belongs. Hopefully it makes it now. There we go. Because it's just really um, close to the to the optical drive box which I could have taken out probably for installation purposes but then that's awkward to have to do every time you want to service something. So the answer is I'm going to go in about like so now I'm going to install the fans, these guys, uh, in the normal direction so that they push air uh, through the, bring it in the front and push it through. I'm going to uh, go, go off and do that and I'll be back. So now the radiator's mounted in the front. The fans are mounted on the outside to pull air, cold air in. And they're screwed in with the long screws into the through, into this radiator, so you kind of got to hold things steady. But now it's in. I've got three fans on the outside. There's enough wire to bring them to the inside and put them all in on the jumper. I just have to decide which one, um, uh, which connectors I want to use. There's one here labeled pump. Probably time to mount this block here. Now I'm to the point where I need to put some um, compound here on the processor. 
going to wipe it off carefully. Make sure it doesn't have any handprints on it. They supply a little tube of uh, compound that they claim will do a couple of these. Um, this is always to me a sensitive thing and what I usually try to do is put a is put a um, line of it across. We'll see how that works. You don't need a ton of it but it does need to get spread out. I've got a spreader so let's see if I can get it to uh, some of this stuff is kind of viscous and it's hard to spread, so... so I'm kind of going to just dab at it. I say the instructions are make it an even coating. Um, I know there are some people that just put a dot in the middle and then let it under pressure it'll spread out. This is kind of why I was delaying uh, putting the memory in because it kind of restricts your... I guess as long as I'm at it here. I'm going to put a little bit more there there, there, just a couple little dots. Ultimately when you put the heat sink on top of it and fasten it down it's going to squish it and tend to spread it out so so in some ways you don't really need to overthink it but I remember there was a day when they'd give you a template you could put around the edges of the processor that gave you a, I'll call it a consistent thickness that you'd you know, run, run something over the top. That looks pretty good. So I usually overthink it but I need to tear off the tape on the bottom of this. should go this direction. Where's my screwdriver? There it is. checking my instructions to see if there are any additional ones about how tight to make it or anything but there are not so I think the basic answer is get her snug down so now I do need to connect fans this one is not fan this is I believe this is something new with lighting I'm gonna lift that dangle for a minute Here's my fan connection for the ones up front. And there's a system fan and pump. I'm going to add I'm going to attach those to the one that says CPU fan. So the three those three fans are tied together. And there is one specific one that says fan for system fan and pump. Well, I don't want to plug this in blindly, so I'm going to leave that one. But I believe it's the lights for the block. Now that I'm back, I'm going to do electronic stuff again. I better get my wrist uh, strap back on here. I set it aside while I was doing hardware work. With so here's the video card. Take those two out there. And again, I'm just going to line it up first. And then after that, and that's where it's going to sit. Just kind of looking to see what else it covers up. It'll be a little bit more fun to reach the... Um, 
reach the SATA connectors under there. But that's where it is. So. Okay. There we go. Well, it looks pretty. Now this whole thing with game uh, machines having um, see-through panels, they try to make parts look nice that never had to look nice in the olden days. So let us see if we can sneak this guy in here. Like so. There it goes. And it's latched. Put those screws back in the back here. It needs one of these PCIe plugs. Guess it doesn't matter. I'll use the I'll use the end one. Like so I think that's everything. Certainly I have to tie down some loose end uh, cables and things and but the machine is built. I'll put in the optical drive later. I know that's still something I need to do. But it's, I'm not in a hurry. I don't need it right this second. And I will need to get my operating system by bringing a hard drive from my old computer. Because I have a retail, just I'm not pirating anything. My old computer has a retail copy of Windows that is registered with Microsoft. And under the terms of retail, I should be able to pick the drive up, put it on a new motherboard, and light it up. Um, I've done that before. You know, it's not, like I say, it's not like an OEM license. It's a, once I take it off the old machine, I have the right to activate it on the new machine. And uh, the last time I did it was with a machine that broke the motherboard, and I was just replacing the motherboard. But, but hey, looks pretty nice. Everything's together. There are the fans installed on the front, and there's the filter that goes back in here. Again, where my optical drive will go. So I'm going to leave it sit here until I get my until I get my hard drive, and then I'm going to put it in one of the bays here to to uh, get it get it started. Well, before I start moving hard drives around, let me see if it'll just boot. I don't have a mouse. I've got a keyboard plugged in. Helps if you turn on the power supply, Dan. Oh, here we go. All right. So look at that. No bootable device. Makes sense. Oh, the switch by mistake. All right, so it boots. Pump is running, CPU fan is running, CPU frequency, CPU is running really cool, it's only 31 degrees C, which is very cool. Um, Alright, gotta get myself a hard drive. 